Hey guys, what's up? It's Chief from Spreadshot Games, and God damn it, fucking phone bombed as soon as I start. Yeah. Now you already told me that. It's for real this time. The lockout's for real over. That's right, guys. The lockout is for real over. It's been for real over. My guys played for the first time last night. We kicked the piss-ass Red Wings' asses. And my favorite player, Yaroslav Halak, got the first shutout of the league this year. So hockey is back. I can't be more happy. I'm back. I'm going to be making a lot more videos. And what better way to get it kicked off then a video response to my good friend and fellow YouTuber, Ken16Bit, who's also a fellow Blues fan. Um, I just found it really fitting. And the video he's made is kind of old, but it's what got us into collecting. And that's an interesting question for me because with a lot of stuff in my life, I just consider it luck. Um, what got me into collecting? The first, I guess, retro console I bought in more recent times as of being in North Carolina was an Atari 2600. I was just cruising around on Craigslist and I was found, I was like, hey, you can buy video games on it. There's a video game thing. I looked it up. Um, the lady was selling an Atari 2600 with uh, some games, two remotes. It had the cabinet thing that kept games and had a plastic case over the top of it. It was hers when she was a little kid, and she kept it in pretty good, pristine shape ever since. She was really proud of the condition it came in. She was actually upset that the case hat was actually the plastic thing that came over the top of it. The dome actually had a crack in it. She's like, oh, I'm so upset about that, because she, she really liked that as a kid, and when it got hurt, you know, scuffed up and cracked, uh... You know, she took it personally, but it came with a box game, and I can't remember what it was, and uh, some old Atari comic books, which were really cool to get into, and she sold me that for like $80, um, you know, and I took it home, and I never really played the thing, I just thought it was cool to have an Atari, and I remember looking at them on eBay a long time ago, just for some reason... Uh, just to look, I guess, and they were like, you know, the cheapest I was finding them with, like, games and stuff was like 100, 130, so I called this lady up, she called me right back, uh, met her, bought the, bought the Atari, and I took it home and kind of let it sit there, never really hooked it up, I had a color tube television, but by that time, uh, Reach was out, or was going to come out. I had just upgraded to a 50-inch plasma, and I was all into, like, the HD, um, you know, current generation games and stuff. But the Atari didn't hit my, like, get, get the taste in my mouth for collecting. Uh, again, that was a good find, but it wasn't as lucky as I got with um, the one that actually uh, got the taste in my mouth for collecting. Which, again, later on, I bought a Super Nintendo before back in Illinois. Um, I got a really good deal on it because I knew somebody uh, that worked at a retro game store. And uh, she had a really big crush on me, so she sold it to me for a really good price. But <laughs> um, that's I got a Super Nintendo before... And basically, I got a Super Nintendo to play Mega Man X and Contra 3 because those were the games that my uncle had when I was a kid, and those are the games that I like to play. So I was just like, I want a Super Nintendo so I can play some of those games that I like playing at Uncle Eric's house. So that taste got in my mouth again. Let's start looking on Craigslist and find a Super Nintendo so I can play Mega Man X, Contra 3, 
maybe maybe some other stuff. I might pick up obscure titles up from here and there off eBay, but I find this ad. Eighty-five dollars takes home a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, some Nintendo sixty-four stuff, but not an N sixty-four console, and a PlayStation One with no remotes or games. Uh, so I was like, damn, that's, that's nice. Like, I'll just get whatever, and, uh, I'll just sell off the, uh, PlayStation, or, like, or the Nintendo. Like, I really don't care. And it came with some games. They said a, a couple, you know, quite a few games for each. Um, so they call me, and they're just like, do you really want it? Yeah, I really want it. And I get the typical thing I get with Craigslist all the time is, well, because three people have already called, and they just try to keep lowballing and stuff like that. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, you got games, you got three systems, $85. It's fine with me. I know the going price of buying a SNES at a store is about 40 I was figured, you know, a Nintendo and a PlayStation together is at least over another 40 $85 sounds about right. So, I go there. It's these two older, an older couple. Um, they explain to me how the console were their kids, and they used to play with their kids, and they were very happy. I have a video of actually all this stuff I got, like, two days after I got it on my old channel, but the video quality is shit, and I suggest not to watch it. But, they're talking about all this stuff, and the dude pops the trunk, and I just see those wooden cases of just Nintendo games. Like, four of them, filled, and I'm just seeing, like, Zelda, Mario Brother, like, the, the, the classic stuff that, um that I really didn't, you know, or that I did know about and stuff. And I was like, damn. And then, like, the Super Nintendo games were in a... They were in a bag, or maybe they were in the cases, too. But I just remember seeing some of them and everything. And I was just like... And at that point, like, I kind of got excited because I was like, holy crap, that's a lot of stuff and everything. And to go with it, they had these boxes and boxes of Nintendo powers... And there's like, they got the old magazines too, would you want those? Because we'll just throw them in. If you don't want them, we're going to throw them in a dumpster. And I was like, no, no, I'll take them and everything. So they give me all this shit. And I put it in the trunk of my car and I drive home. And I'm going through all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, look at all this crap I got. Like, really, really classic Nintendo. You know, it's basically what a video game fan would have growing up and stuff. I didn't have super, super awesome stuff, but some, some things that, you know, I had Breath of Fire 1 and 2. Everything was card only. Yeah, and I had a couple booklets, but not a lot. Um, you know, Breath of Fire 1 and 2, Zelda on NES, Link's, uh, Link's Adventure on NES, um, Mario Brothers, you know, you know, Mario Brothers Duck Hunt, Super Mario Brothers 2. I didn't have 3, which was disappointing because that was my favorite one on NES. Uh, Super Mario World, um, you know, and then I started getting this stuff like Chrono Trigger and Earthbound and everything, and, um, so I started looking up, like, I'm just like, I'm pretty sure some of these games are harder to find, and I'm pretty sure they're pretty sought after, and everything, and I had, I had, like I said, I got some N64 stuff, but not a lot, but every N64 title I got, even though I didn't get a lot, we're good, I got Star Fox, Lynx, uh, Ocarina of Time, almost said Link to the Past. Um, shit. I don't know, good ones. But there's only like four of them. One of them was like 1080 snowboarding. But, and some of the stuff was more obscure titles. And I go online, I find the Nintendo Age forum, and I'm going through titles, looking up, because they have rarity scales and stuff like this. And I'm finding out some of this stuff is worth money because it's popular, and some of it's a little bit more obscure. Maybe not worth as much money, or maybe just worth as much or more, but they're very obscure titles that, on the rarity scale, are rarer than stuff like Earthbound. Maybe not as sought after, and maybe you won't get as much money for, but they're definitely some obscure titles. So, I'm looking at all this stuff I got, and I'm like, holy crap, man, like, this is like... This was somebody's collection, and now it's mine. And, like, I started, you know, just looking up stuff about games, which led to seeing stuff about other games, and finding out all these YouTubers and people that go and chase for games. And, and like, 
I've always liked video games, and I've said it before, um, I'm a little young for retro memories. I don't remember when the SNES came out. I don't remember when the Genesis came out. The Genesis came out in 89, 90, 89 or 90. I was born in 88, the tail end of 88, December of 88. So, you know, I've said it before, my first console that I ever got to play at home was a PlayStation 1. So, it's, retro collecting to me is going back and discovering this stuff. There is no, um, oh, I remember opening this game on Christmas and stuff. The games I remember opening on Christmas are like Crash Bandicoot, um, Ratchet and Clank and Mortal Kombat 3 and stuff like that. You know, Ratchet and Clank obviously was older when I was in middle, like, middle school and stuff. Um, but things like that, that's my childhood, you know, memories. Pokemon, crap like that with my Game Boy and everything. Uh, so retro collecting to me, at least from the SNES back, is digging up the past and playing stuff that maybe I played as a kid because someone else had it. But none of that stuff was ever mine. I don't have childhood memories of it. So it's like a whole new experience for me. Um, the, the Super Nintendo is basically uh, the PS4, <laughs> pretty much. It's a whole new console, and I'm, I'm glad. I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of you guys have fun with digging up the nostalgia and stuff like that. But to me, it's a whole new world, and I love it. Um, the 16-bit era, I really, really enjoy. I think the games are beautiful. Um, and even though, like, now we see them as older games and stuff like that, some of those games back then, like Super Metroid, Super Metroid, I think, is the biggest in terms of, like, just data, the largest game on Super Nintendo. So people who want to say today, it's just like, well, graphics aren't everything just because the game's got a lot of stuff in it, you know, it was the same thing back then. If you cram a lot of stuff in your game, you know, that doesn't make it good. But a lot of people consider Super Metroid, some consider it the best game on the Super Nintendo. And that game was packed. That game was, you know, firing on all cylinders, making the SNES do its work, baby. Because, like, um, you know, it was busting balls. And it really shows because it's an awesome game. But... I mean, and it, you know, basically I just caught the fever from there, and I can't really stop. Hopefully this channel is going to take up a little bit of my time, because I have acquired a lot of things. Uh, I think I'm going to slow down with collecting and kind of go forth into sharing, which I'm very, very interested in. I should have a lot of updates to the channel soon. I got a lot of content in mind. Um, with that said... A couple goals I have for this year coming up 2013 collecting wise um, since I do like the 16-bit era so much I'll still do my yard sales my flea markets and stuff like that but I am gonna be trying to save money and look for some bigger tiles this year I've narrowed down to pretty much four that I would like to get and if anybody can help me out with this um, I do not have a lot of trade bait um, I have some that I'm willing to part with, but the thing about me, a lot of stuff I buy, I tend to want to keep. That's why I buy it. Um, but if you can help me out with any of this stuff, I'm looking for Wild Guns on Super Nintendo, Mega Man 7 on Super Nintendo, preferably Mega Man 7 CIB. That's the only one I really want complete in box, but if it's just a cart, uh, go ahead and hit me up. Harvest Moon on Super Nintendo and I think Super Turrican 2 is the last one that I was really wanting. Those four games, I know they're pretty expensive. I would definitely like to get them. They can just be carts only um, except for Mega Man 7. I prefer carts only now. I was kind of big into boxes and stuff like that but I just can't afford it. Uh, the Universal cases make it look nice and make them look good on shelves. So, that's, you know, that's how I caught the bug, and uh, I still got it, and I'll probably always have it. Um, hopefully I can share my addiction with some of you guys, and 
you know, maybe get some other people involved. I think it's cool to see younger people get involved, and I think it's cool to see younger people um, be enthusiastic about the games that they played as kids, because I know a lot of the older people want to, they want to really shit talk, you know, the PS2 era, stuff like that. that sometimes that's, that's what those younger people might have, you know, maybe the PlayStation 2 to them is like my PlayStation 1, um, so if that's their childhood, you know, memory and stuff like that, it's, it's good, it's good to see people be enthusiastic about uh, you know, growing up with video games because it's definitely fun for me. It's good to see it be fun for somebody else. But Ken, I hope you like it. Uh, that was my long ass story about uh, me throwing money away. So I hope you guys got some other ones and go Blues.